Elon Musk, the chief designer of SpaceX, has given the first update on the Starship program since 2019, proposing a plan to establish a self-sustaining metropolis on Mars. Along with it, he also revealed exciting details about the first 1,000 days of life on Mars. Want to know more? Let's delve in further. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel, Elon Musk World, where we tell you all the latest news about Elon Musk and his multi-billion dollar companies. In today's video, we are going to tell you about how the first 1,000 days will be on Mars. But before we get started, make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of our incredible videos. Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla and SpaceX, has insisted for decades that humanity's best chance for long-term survival is to become a multi-planetary species. He cited raising carbon levels in the atmosphere, catastrophic droughts, and the loss of biodiversity as warning signs of impending disaster. In 2016, he began work on Starship, a program that would shuttle freight and eventually 100 passengers between Earth, Moon, and Mars. NASA has hired SpaceX to build modified Starship vehicles for its Artemis mission by 2021. Musk concentrated on developing the essential infrastructure that would be required to maintain life on Earth, the Moon, Mars, and beyond. Musk, on the other hand, concluded that he wouldn't create an off-planet living habitat on his own. Musk, ever the showman, and with a personal fortune approaching $1 trillion, introduced the Colony Prize, an audacious competition. He'd give $1 billion to any team that could create and run a 100-person underground airtight colony for two years. To put it another way, this is the greatest Mars simulation. The search for life beyond Earth, understanding the genesis of our universe, and most importantly, evolving humankind into a multi-planetary species, are all overarching and linked aims of space exploration as a whole. The development of a self-sustaining human society on Mars, the closest planet to Earth that is practically capable of hosting human settlements and cities, is a crucial stage in this journey. Uncrewed landing missions to Mars, followed by a human landing mission to Mars with relatively small 10 to 20 person crews to establish the first human presence on the planet, advanced infrastructure development to support planned community growth, and finally, transitioning to a self-sufficient state on Mars, are all on the roadmap for sustained human Mars exploration. Musk intends to achieve an orbital test launch this year with Starship, a quick and entirely reusable super heavy lift launch vehicle followed by a variety of missions from a variety of launch sites, including Starbase, KSC, and even ocean launch platforms. A SpaceX Super Heavy booster will launch the Starship. This two-stage spacecraft, Super Heavy first stage and Starship as the second stage, is totally reusable and capable of transporting people and cargo to Earth orbit, the Moon, and Mars. Starship will be used as a lander for both uncrewed and crewed flights, with the payload volume customized for each mission. Given its planned payload capacity, Starship will be able to transport both the necessary equipment and crews for a long-term human exploration on Mars, paving the way for the ultimate construction of communities on the Red Planet. Musk explains how SpaceX's Mars missions will make use of in-space propellant transfer. The booster launches the Starship into Earth orbit, where it is refueled with CH4 and O2 by subsequent tanker flights from Earth. Tankers are Starships that solely carry propellant as a payload. The boosters and tankers then return to the launch site for reuse. The Starship vehicle is then refueled and transported to Mars' surface. By refueling Starship in orbit, the rocket equation is effectively reset, allowing enormous payloads to be delivered to the Moon and Mars. The Starship will be capable of carrying 100 metric tons of payload to the Martian surface and will have a storage capacity both front and aft. The Starship can also transport crew and cargo from Mars to Earth. Local resources processed by a surface propellant manufacturing plant are used to refuel the vehicle on Mars. The Starship then takes off from Mars and returns to Earth in one piece. After the launch of the first two or more uncrewed Starship vehicles, the first human missions to Mars are preferably planned for the Mars launch window. As a result, when humans arrive on Mars, at least two cargo ships will already be there on the surface. This second wave of missions could involve two Starships with crew and cargo. Because humans would most likely live on a starship for the first few years on Mars, until further homes are built, the radiation danger must be studied and managed, and equipment to sustain this first architecture must be created. The first wave of uncrewed starship vehicles can also be relocated and or modified to support the people on the surface as needed. These vehicles will be useful for storage, living, and as a source of refined metals and components. The construction of the facilities in South Texas has been tremendous, as seen by the modifications in the Starship program since Musk last updated it from the location now known as Starbase. Before launch certification can be granted, a legislative process, notably an FAA environmental evaluation, must be completed, 
which Musk estimates will take another two months. While the production site is being expanded, with a new high bay being erected alongside the existing building, Musk's focus has shifted to the launch site. Musk said that stage zero is as complex as the booster or the ship, citing the outstanding launch tower, which took only 13 months from design to completion and emphasized the successful use of the tower with the recent stacking of ship 20 onto booster four. The long-term ambition is for two towers to be built at Starbase's orbital launch site or OLS, though such plans will almost certainly be hampered by continuing environmental evaluations. Musk also mentioned that the future launch site at 39A has actually achieved that milestone, not merely as a backup alternative. Furthermore, SpaceX and the Space Agency recently announced that studies are underway to add an extra launch capabilities to KSC's LC-49. Given the great launch locations of South Texas and Florida's eastern seaboard, a possible scenario may see Starbase concentrating on test launches as well as operational launches with payloads like Starlink, while KSC becomes the primary launch site. This corresponds to KSC as the most likely launch point for NASA missions like HLS or the Human Landing System. I think Starbase is better suited to become our advanced R&D location, where we try out new designs and new versions of the rocket, and I think Cape Kennedy could be our main operational launch site, Musk said before mentioning the Ocean Launch Platform, of which SpaceX has already purchased two. Then over time, I believe we'll have floating spaceports, similar to ocean spaceports. We've already had these two converted oil rigs that will be converted into orbital launch sites that can be moved around the world. Phobos and Deimos are the two platforms that are currently being transformed, albeit little work has been done in the recent months. With the completion of its own launch tower before the end of the year, one will acquire renewed focus. The first operating platform would serve as a template for the purchase or building of subsequent platforms, with Musk speculating that quite a few of those may be built. Although Musk currently prepared Starship fans for a few failures during initial testing, Starlink, HLS, and Dear Moon missions are already on the books once the vehicle passes into the operational phase. There was also a hint at announcements soon to come. While the Starship's cargo capabilities are obvious, the vehicle will only evolve into launching humans after it has proven itself during uncrewed launches. Musk created SpaceX in 2001 with a single purpose in mind, to land humans on Mars. He recalls thinking at the time that he couldn't understand why, Following the successful Apollo flights to the moon, mankind hasn't visited Mars or gone very far into space at all. Instead, space exploration resources were sparse, and government spaceflight programs couldn't take the kind of risks that private ventures could. Musk started at a firm focused on developing rockets and greatly enhanced the vehicles that contribute to the backbone of interplanetary travel with an amassed fortune from his time at PayPal. If humans are successful in landing on Mars, Musk believes that the momentum generated by such an achievement will spur further innovations, much like early explorers seeking glory, gold, and spices pushed advancement in ship technology and global industry. Ultimately, Musk believes this kind of endeavor will bring Mars out of the realm of science fiction and transform it from a world fraught with difficulty and danger to one that humans might actually enjoy living on, including Musk. We sincerely hope you enjoyed the video. If so, give it a like and share it with your friends and family. Let us know if you have any questions or comments in the section below. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see more of our incredible videos. You can also watch our other videos that have been specially selected for you. We look forward to seeing you in our next video.